It's just extraordinary, Kristen. We showed it on the program last night because it's so blatantly misleading. They are telling lies. Here's what Donald Trump actually said. We're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected... Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. Yeah, Krista, to spin this as a threat of political violence is the very definition of the so-called fake news that Donald Trump always goes on about. Well, look, everyone with a functioning prefrontal cortex knows exactly what Trump was talking about. Um, but this is all the Democrats have at this point. If they cannot convince Joe Biden to step aside, which they may not be able to do, they're stuck with him as the nominee. And they're going to try to go back to that 2020 playbook of just getting people afraid of Trump and his followers and calling them Nazis and racists. And they're very upfront about the fact that this is their strategy. They've got no record to run on. Uh, but I don't believe this will be as successful as it was last time around, because at this point, voters have two track records that they can compare directly. The economy was better under Trump. There was less violence in urban cities under Trump. The border was secure under President Trump. Yeah, you might not like his mean tweets. You might not like some of the rhetoric, but, you know, the facts on the ground under each, under each administration don't lie. And people are, are waking up to what the media is doing. Yeah, they know that the media lie about him. They know they spin and, and lie about him. It becomes so obvious because they keep doing it. And just to square the circle on that, of course, there are so many in the mainstream and leftist media who often use the word bloodbath in their coverage of various political events. Here's some of that. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath one way or the other. Bloodbath blood for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath. They're shaping up to be a bloodbath. Head off a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off year elections are are often a bloodbath. This week's bloodbath for Democrats, a bloodbath at the ballot box. Yeah, there you go, Kristen. They'll all have to be indicted, those media people, for encouraging political <laughs> violence by using the term bloodbath. Let's switch, though, to the current incumbent. And Joe Biden, you and I often talk about the fact that he uh, gets confused, he gets dazed, he falls over. Uh, I don't think they can possibly run with him again. How could they do that to the free world? But we will see. But he was out again in the last couple of days. And often when he's speaking, it's very hard to even know what he's trying to say. Have a look. Great to have you here, and it's very happy to see Northern Ireland's Executive Assembly reinstated last month. Now Northern Ireland is a fully functioning government again, and I didn't admit your colleague. Young people in Northern Ireland represent the great peace uh, dividend of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement. <laughs> Who knows, Kristen? Like me, you have to go to the White House website and look where they have the prepared <laughs> speech there. Then you can read what he was supposed to be saying. But there's a, a fascinating little story about uh, Joe Biden's footwear and the fact that they're now having to put him into some comfortable, stable footwear, hoping, of course, that he doesn't trip over and fall over as often. Here, here's a report from the U.S. Many observers couldn't help but notice his footwear. Are those sneakers? Yep, they're so-called lifestyle sneakers made by Hoka, designed for maximum comfort and support while walking or hiking. And here they are, the Joe Biden sneaker. They're made by Hoka. These are called the Hoka Transport, and as you can see, they look quite comfortable. They have a wide sole, no doubt great for stability, and the president does have a history of stumbling. Yeah, well, those, the reporter's version were a little bit more fashionable, I meant, Kristen. But, but Kristen, the, the takeout from all this for me is that it seems to be coming much more of a mainstream story. Uh, the president's uh, physical situation, his mental acuity, uh, it's becoming very much a threat of public commentary, isn't it? Yes, everybody knows exactly what is going on at this point. Uh, the president of the United States can barely walk. Uh, so they've essentially outfitted him with some geriatric orthopedic shoes, <laughs> and they've branded them lifestyle sneakers. I mean, leave it to the Democrats and their euphemisms. It's quite impressive. But uh, we've seen him stumble and fall so many times at this point. He literally falls up the stairs sometimes, getting onto Air Force One. Uh, and, and it's just so sad. 
that at this point, Chris. I really, I believe the Democrats on the inside are desperate to get rid of him, but I just don't know if he's going to do it willingly. I don't know if they will be able to, to replace him at this point, but we'll see. And we hasten to add that for elderly people in the US, Australia, around the world, sensible shoes and looking after yourself, very, very wise and sensible. <laughs> but we're just pointing out that this bloke is not up to the task and they're pretending otherwise, aren't they, Kristen? Thanks for joining us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you as always, Chris.